Desmond Allen. I am a member of the Statlium Nation there, and but uh, now I'm living, working, and raising my family here in the Schwetmick Territory, and I'm a small-scale regenerative farmer. It's rebuilding this this world that really needs help. You know, we've really extracted a lot of resources, and you know, in the name of production, we've gotten uh, the soil is really degraded, and I'd li really like to be able to do my part in just rebuilding whatever little chunk of land I can. Localized small-scale farming is really the key to to uh, food sovereignty in the, in the area. You know these big giant farms and and big uh, big conventional things are they're great for producing food for the masses, but as we've seen with COVID and these floods destroying roads, we had empty grocery stores. And you know we do have a lot of farmers and ranchers in the area, but we don't have a lot of processing capacity. It's not sustainable. If you can just drive 20 minutes down the road to your local farmer and pick up some steaks, a couple of chicken, you know, some bacon, that's what it needs to be like. I do do a small bit of vegetable growing, but I'm more of an animal farmer, so I do grass-fed beef, pastured poultry, and pastured pork. So I, I think the beef are my favorite because if you take care of your soils, they're going to take care of you, whether it's growing forage for your animals or growing your vegetables. Uh, in farming, you got to really diversify your portfolio, right? You got you can't just grow chickens. It's you know it's not to be, it's not going to get you there. You got to have multiple streams of income, and when you have all these multiple streams of income, it can be hard to keep them separate and make sure that uh, each enterprise is producing for itself, right? You can't have a, a grass finished beef business that is really doing hot, but then you're you know, you're raising pork or something, but that the grain's insane and it's really bringing you down and you lump all these enterprises together and you look at your numbers at the end of the year and it's, oh, I'm not doing great. But it really, if you separate them and then you look like, okay, this, this enterprise is doing good, but this enterprise is really dragging me down. Well, maybe you gotta cut that, right? Or rethink about how, how you're doing it. You really gotta get to know your numbers and keep track of records because if you're not tracking records and you're just out there you can produce the best of the products but if you're not doing it financially sustainably you're not going to last working in the business is your everyday tasks that need to be done feeding watering maintenance you know that and you can really get caught up in that because when you want to be a farmer that's why you're doing it. You enjoy doing these things, right? You're outside, taking care of animals, watching plants grow. It's great. But you really have to be able to work on the business and get inside the office, look at your numbers, do your marketing, and uh, make sure you're working on the business. Like the working in the business is, you know, the $15 an hour job. But when you get inside the office and you take care of the business side of things, that's your $50 an hour job, right? You got to be in there working on the business as well as in the business. So it's really important to build a strong business plan. So that includes everything from human resources to marketing and including your gross margin analysis. So when you're looking at starting an enterprise, you got to do a gross margin analysis to see if it's even viable on paper. So you'd get all your costs, do your research, you know, you're going to have feed costs, labor costs, marketing costs. You got to get that all compiled and then look at your market and see what you can get and your expected return from your enterprise and put them together to make sure you're gonna be coming out on top. And if it works good on paper, it might work in real life. With regenerative agriculture, and it's all about your practices. So you could use like rotational grazing on your pastures and use that to harvest your, your forages. And by doing that, you move your animals frequently so that they're not overgrazing in one spot so that your animals will be in a, in a spot they'll graze it and then you move it on and then that that piece of land has a lot of time to rest and the plants can recover and while they're doing that they're capturing more sunlight and putting in more root extradits and roots into the soil building up that organic matter and also feeding the biology underground and it, it really has to do with the rest period so you want to leave that grass you know you could take about 50% off, leave it, and by the time you come back, 30 days in a nice moist environment, maybe 60 in a drier area, or longer if it's really dry and brittle. And then that gives the plant time to recover, strengthen itself, and then you just come back and do the same thing over again. 
So with regenerative agriculture, it's all about how you do things. And it's, it's a lot about management. You gotta manage for your soils. So you wanna be, instead of degrading your soils, rebuilding them by using different techniques. So say with grazing, you wanna be able to keep the plant in a vegetative cycle. So you let it grow up and you eat it with your animals before it goes to seed. And then that will put, keep the plant in a vegetative cycle which pumps carbon into the soil and it, it, the roots extradate sugars to the uh, microbiology and really helps build that uh, soil biology and, and that's the epitome of soil health is your underground livestock. With the regenerative agriculture it's a lot more management intensive than a regular livestock operation or vegetable operation. You really have to be taking close attention to the soils and really give yourself time to be out there and, and do the management. Say with regenerative agriculture and rotational grazing, I move my cattle every single day to a new piece of land. And a conventional guy would just boot them out in the field, let them sit there for a month and a half or whatever the time was that they let them sit there and just eat it right down. And then, you know, that's, you don't have to do a lot of management there, but it really will hurt your soil and uh, reduce your productivity over time. So I find that you just gotta make sure you you plan for more labor hours than you would expect because it, it is management intensive, but in the end it's worth it.